The biggest thing you'll notice in Illustrator CS6 is the radically different interface. They've been sitting on an old architecture for many years, so they rewrote it from the ground up, and now all the panels have consistent look and feel and respond to you the same way. And that's huge, because they, you would get different behaviors in different panels in the older version, and now they all identically function. Um, the other thing I love is the pattern maker. The ability to make and edit patterns is a lot easier. Um, just so much control and it's panel based now, which is very cool. I'm a big advocate for a non-destructive workflow in Photoshop, and so I'm really thrilled that the new crop tool is non-destructive by default. I don't have to do anything special. The checkbox to delete pixels is off by default, and so I don't have to do anything to make sure that I'm preserving all of my pixels. And Adobe's also made some changes to the overall behavior of the crop tool, making it a lot more natural, I think, because we're now able to rotate the image itself and to apply the crop based on the actual image, rather than having this box that's moving all around the photo. And so to me, it makes it a lot easier to work with a tool that we've all been familiar with for many years. Some of my favorite features are the ability to pick out a skin tone. Skin tones are the bane of any photographer's existence, and to be able to select just one and make color corrections to it without having to make those selections yourself is amazing. And the Content Aware Move tool, it's one of those wow features where you could just select someone and pick them up and move them to a new spot, and then Photoshop blends away the background and blends them into the new spot where they've landed. It's phenomenal. There are lots of great features in Premiere Pro CS6, but for me as an editor, the ones that really stand out are the ones that make it faster and uh, easier to cut movies. So I'm a massive fan of the hover scrub feature in the project panel. You can just move your mouse over a clip and mark the clip in the bin on the thumbnail. And it's really effective, it's really quick. I'm also a huge fan of the new trimming tools. And in particular, the JKL trim is something I've been asking for for years. And now that it's in the application, it's a massive time saver. To be able to just play back the ends of your clips and trim them is uh, fantastic. And I suppose my third feature would be adjustment layers. Another feature I've wanted for ages and ages. And you've had it in Photoshop, you've had it in After Effects, but now you can apply an effect to, effectively it's a, a transparent piece of video. Like a, like a transparent video used to be, but it couldn't take effects. Now you can put an effect on and it'll apply to any clip underneath that layer, underneath that piece of a layer. It's a fantastic feature for unlocking new workflows for special effects. My favourite features in After Effects CS6 are the new Ray Traced 3D engine, which allows me to extrude and bevel layers in After Effects, and that includes text and shape layers. Also, my other favourite feature is the ability to import Illustrator files, take those layers and convert them to shape layers. Again, that opens up a whole host of new possibilities. I also just love the 3D camera tracker. As a motion graphic designer, I wasn't that excited when I first heard about it because it seemed like a more visual effects feature. But now I've played with it, I absolutely love it. I can just track 3D with ease and then composite new elements into scenes shot with amazing camera moves and it looks like I've animated the files myself, whereas all I've done is just point and click the 3D tracker and it's worked out the angles of the shot for me. Amazing. I think that uh, my favorite feature is the global performance cache. And I think the same is going to be true for anyone who's used After Effects before, uh, because you'll notice that no longer does After Effects have to re-render everything. It's just a whole lot faster, no matter what you're working on. With Prelude, you can ingest a huge amount of clips in one step and apply markers to them, apply tags, and put comments on. And what's nice about it is that it integrates in with other editing systems, and obviously in particular with Premiere Pro. You can select a bunch of clips in Prelude, click on them to say, go send this to Premiere Pro, and Premiere Pro is just gonna automatically receive them right there in the bin with your markers, and the new markers features in Premiere Pro are designed to be integrated in with Prelude. So all of your comments all pop up on the timeline. It just makes the whole process of marking up media much quicker and easier. 
InDesign CS6 is radically different in certain respects. Anybody who's a designer who is doing, uh, it doesn't matter if you're doing print or web or mobile, you ultimately will have to touch HTML5. And now InDesign CS6 has added liquid layouts and tools that actually write animation and buttons and things into HTML5, which you could never do before seamlessly. So that's a huge improvement to InDesign CS6. With InDesign CS6 as well, you can have linked content. And linked content, many people are used to the links panel for updating things, but now you can share content across many documents, groups and stories. And this way, if you're designing a project that might go to three different mediums in different sizes, it makes it far easier to update one source file and have groups of things or individual stories update everywhere. Audition is just a really sweet application to work with. It's um, very responsive, very stable. It has uh, just a lovely interface. And the new versions had some great enhancements. You've now got the latch, touch, and ride modes available in the audio mixer. So you can ride your audio and do a live mix, which is especially useful if you've got an external desk so you can you can mix uh, on the fly. And there's some wonderful new enhancements like the automatic speech alignment. This allows you to replace parts of your audio in a way that is matched to the original waveform. So instead of just laying over the top, if you've got something like a dialogue that you want to replace, you can do so using Audition and it will exactly match the movements of the mouth of the person speaking. My top favorite feature in this new version of Dreamweaver, CS6, is the Web Fonts Manager. It's really great because you can take your web fonts, install them once, and they then become immediately available in every single website that you've got in Dreamweaver. And the great thing is that you can also build your own custom font stacks and use web fonts within them. And that really is a great time saver. A great feature in Dreamweaver CS6 is the CSS Transitions panel. And CSS Transitions, this is part of uh, CS3, and one of the great problems with doing CS Transitions is you've got to put in all of the vendor-specific prefixes. Dreamweaver just takes care of the whole lot for you. And it's very easy, very simple. Even if you don't have a great deal of knowledge of CSS, you can make simple transitions like moving things on hover and smooth transitions from one state to another. It's great. Speedgrade is a really powerful, it's a high-end finishing grading tool for color correction on your clips. It supports high-end formats, you can work with DPX in it, you can work with stereoscopic in it. It's a, a very powerful application and it's included as part of Production Premium and the Master Collection. You've now got three options for grading. You can use Speedgrade, you could use After Effects, or even you could use the newly revamped three-way color corrector inside of Premiere Pro.